So as you can imagine, uh, working in a team that facilitates outside broadcasts, as COVID took hold, our full diary completely emptied. Uh, our first priority was to use the expertise and tools we already had to set up as many of our presenters across Radio 4, uh, World Service and 5 Live uh, with facilities to get on air daily from their homes, and in some cases second homes in the middle of nowhere. Uh, it was also immediately apparent that everyone in the organization needed a way to record interviews, discussions, and all sorts of other content without presenters, producers, and engineers being in the same location, i.e. everyone was at home. Uh, there are lots of, um, there's lots of audio over IP tools out there, but most of them are for single live point-to-point -point connections. So we needed to be able to join lots of people together without a single location receiving and mixing all those participants together, i.e. a studio. Uh, so with the aim of building a tool for pre-recorded items, I wanted to mitigate for the warbles and Daleky clicks and Daleky audio artifacts we all know and hate that manifest from poor or unstable internet connections. To that end, I built on the idea of a technique we know as uh, Simulrec, Traditionally, this is where an interview is conducted over the telephone, while one or more of the participants records themselves locally with their quality recording device, and then sends that quality recording after the fact by email, Dropbox, or in a jiffy bag to replace the original telephone recording. So after a month of after lockdown began, uh, we launched Prerec, uh, initially to a select number of users across different genres of BBC radio output, but now with a user base of over 600. It's used to record everything from one-on-one -on -one interviews, discussion programs, and many full-blown radio dramas. This is quite literally a comedy club extravaganza on BBC Radio 4 Extra. I'm Jake Yap, but I'm not actually your host for the next three hours. The presenting honours will be shared amongst all of your usual comedy club presenters. Five Lives Rugby Union Weekly. Americast. Americast from BBC News. Now on the BBC World Service, witness history with me, Frahana Hyder. This is Hooked. This is the podcast where we talk about addiction and recovery, warts and all. Hello and welcome to BBC Radio 4's Evil Genius with me, Russell Kane, the show where we tug stars from their firmaments. So the prereq workflow goes like this. A host user logs in and creates a session. The host then creates an invite, which generates a unique URL to send to each guest participant. Each guest clicks on their unique link, is connected to the session, and is able to talk to everyone else on that session live. The host starts the recording, and all the connected users are notified. Each participant's web browser starts sending small chunks of their local audio over a background TCP connection to a record server. And then the host stops recording and all the uploaded chunks are recompiled immediately into an audio file for each participant and made available to the host to download. Now, I imagine most of you have heard of WebRTC. It's a relatively young technology in terms of its compatibility between browsers, but luckily for us, it got much better towards the end of last year. WebRTC is a way of establishing low latency, secure peer-to-peer -peer media connections between web browsers. All of the front-end code for Prereq is written in JavaScript, and a lot of the functionality rests on built-in APIs available in modern web browsers. The back-end systems are also written in JavaScript, running in J Node.js. So first, we use the Media Devices API to access the computer's audio device. As Prereq's uh, raison d'etre is to capture the best original audio we can, we turn off all the echo cancellation and noise gating constraints. Once the browser has asked the user for access to the microphone and permission has been given, uh, we can do what we want with that returned audio stream. So next, we establish an RTP peer-to-peer -peer connection between each person in the con uh, that's connected to the same session, so everyone can talk to each other in real time. We do this with a full mesh connection model, which doesn't require any intermediary media server. Everyone is directly connected to everybody else. Uh, we do this using the WebRTC or RTC Peer Connection API. This API requires some way to negotiate or signal between each peer. The negotiation includes my IP address and port of this, what's yours, and we use the ICE protocol for this. And I can use these code to codecs, how about you? And we use the STP protocol for this. So there's no standardized way of doing this signaling, uh, but it generally requires a highly available server that every participant can uh, browser can access. So for this, I've written a custom signaling server running on AWS EC2 to provide this mechanism. 
and use the WebSocket transport protocol to transmit and receive the messages. And then the final piece of the puzzle is making the local recordings in quality and getting them to a central storage location quickly and reliably for download. Again, we use an API that's built into most modern browsers called the Media Recorder API. This takes the audio stream we were given by the Media Devices API and periodically returns small chunks of audio data that we can do something with. So in our case, we send those little chunks of audio every second over a TCP connection to another custom Node.js server application. Once a recording session has been stopped, our server then puts all those pieces together into an audio file per person, transcoding it into a format that we like, so 48K WAVs, and then puts it into AWS S3 storage. Those files are then made available to the session host via a secure download URL. So the beauty of this system means that uh, the recordings aren't reliant on the stability of any one participant's internet connection. If the host loses their connection, all the guest recordings continue to be made and uploaded. If the guest loses their connection momentarily, there might be a wobble or a dropout on the live on the live element, but their browser buffers their local recording and uploads it to our servers as soon as their connection resumes. So I hope these broad concepts will uh, inspire some of you to use the freely available media technologies in the web browser to build useful tools that fit your own requirements. And having learned a great deal very quickly about WebRTC, we could see the potential it could afford us. We suddenly had the ability to put a broadcast quality codec in hundreds of people's homes. Almost infinite possibilities were uh, made available to us. Hello, I'm Robin Ince. And I'm Brian Cox, and this is the Infinite Monkey Cage. And yet again, we are joined by a lockdown audience dotted around the country. Are hundreds of people just staring at Brian Cox's face on their laptop. But this time, you can actually talk back. So for our audience here, would you like to say hello to Brian? <laughs> Let's hear it from the people at home. So... <laughs> Uh, a bit of a unique show. Uh, as far as we are aware, it is the very first one in the world. This is the BBC World Service. I am Dr Kevin Fong, with a sound team socially distanced elsewhere, a panel of leading engineers geographically stretched between Milan, London and Chicago, and all of us linked to a live event audience from 32 different countries across six continents worldwide and with us right now. Is it a good idea to put a round thing in a square hole? Oh. Yes. Lisa. Ah, when you're dating a robot. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new series of Paul Sinha's General Knowledge. I'm excited. This is the most number of people I've seen for four months, beating the previous record of two. <laughs> oh, come on, people. Come on. <laughs> Quite classy. Let's hear it from the people at home. Yeah, you just silence the internet. Yeah, the whole internet. Quiet. So, for obvious reasons, Radio 4's The Infinite Monkey Cage had to stop recording their program in front of a live audience. Uh, but they were really happy with their experience of using Prerec to record the show remotely. So, on a phone call with the producers of the program, we told them, We've got an idea. Are you up for trying something out? And thankfully, they were. And on the 1st of June 2020, we recorded the very first program in front of a virtual live audience of over 150 people all sat at home watching and reacting to the show being recorded. Hello. I hope everything's going well today. Uh, my name is Robin Ince, and I do a show on Radio 4 called The Infinite Monkey Cage, where my general job is interrupting Brian Cox when people become overly confused by the density of his theoretical and particle physics ideas. And we started doing on The Infinite Monkey Cage shortly after lockdown. We began a new series, and the, I was incredibly impressed by how fast that was possible. The first two episodes that we managed to do, and this was a great thing as well, one of the exciting things about no longer being particularly uh, attached to the radio theatre, but by doing it from home, was that none of our guests had an alibi for not doing the show. So it meant that we could have things like four astronauts on one show, or we could have Steve Martin on a show, or we could have Eric Idle on the show, we could do all those kind of things. It didn't matter where they were in the world. So first of all, that was fantastic that we could do those kind of things. Very often we would have guests, we were based 
basically dealing with five different time zones and thousands of miles difference and distance. And, and that didn't matter. Um, so that was the first thing that was brilliant. But then the, the second thing was by the third week, we became the the test ground. We became the, uh, uh, the cat that was going to be experimented on in terms of actually having a live audience listening to the show and us being able to hear their response, something that we're still doing now with the new series that we're just working on. Um, I have to say we had almost no problems with it uh, whatsoever. It was I, I was slightly doubtful initially because I was worried that already this distance by the fact this this strange thing where you have somewhere between 200 and I think 350 people as an audience but all of them watching you separately so they're all sat in their office or the corner of their sitting room or wherever it might be but somehow that did come together and it does actually sound like an audience and so I, I thought will this work will it sound canned it didn't sound canned um and it also does work very well in terms of the kind of where it is in the mix means that it does become just a rhythm track of how the show is going. So every now and again, for instance, uh, last week we recorded a show um, all about flies, uh, which became far more lurid um, than, than I, I thought it would, to be honest. There was uh, I mean, it's, it's a show that's meant to be broadly about flies, but it turned out that um, a lot of it is about the genitals of flies. But you can find out about that later on. But anyway, we, by having an audience that we can hear we do get this kind of yeah the momentum of the show and it really does help the momentum of the show so i would say overall i have found that the fakery that i was worried about the fact that it would sound disconnected in a way that it isn't as disconnected when we are in the radio theater and the audience is immediately in front of us that didn't happen in fact in some ways i think there is a, a feeling that the audience is even more connected in that whole kind of that zoom experience that everyone is looking directly at you and you're looking directly at them um and so uh well actually we can't see the audience but that's uh, uh brian never can because humans are not really he doesn't see, see things on that scale he merely sees just a load of kind of you know muons and gluons um moving around electrons and uh, and various subatomic particles um so anyway i found it really useful uh and i think we as a show we almost don't want to go back ever to doing it with a with an audience in front of us because it has allowed us to i think create a level of, of intimacy in the show i think it's really helped in terms of the interactive and reactive way that we have with our guests on the show as well um and so that's what i would say is that it was it's a really for us it's been fantastic very very not even a steep learning curve it just all of those behind it um they mastered the technology very very quickly we just kind of plugged in and off we went so thank you very much future technology and all of those wise people who create it hope the rest of the day goes well bye bye we also have to deal with producers and presenters calling it a zoom recording uh, i don't know if anyone's tried recording an audience on zoom but it doesn't work so we do currently use Zoom's infrastructure as our broadcast medium, uh, but it could easily be any other low latency platforms such as um, Teams or Millicast or Chime, etc. So the BBC virtual audience is in, assessment, in essence a system for receiving many hundreds of outside sources. We've done over 50 programs across different genres for radio and TV. Uh, on the 13th of November, we've broadcast our first live to air virtual audience on BBC One's Children in Need program. Uh, and now we're recording shows with audiences up to a thousand strong.